Everyone, welcome to our new NASDA Spotlight podcast. Today, we're talking with Doc Kyle about our upcoming conference in Columbus, Ohio. So get excited. Hi, Dot. Hi, Amber. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So today we want to learn a little bit about you first, and then we'll t- get down to the details about the conference. So our first question for you is very insightful. Uh, coffee or tea? Definitely tea. There's a there's a blood orange tea from Trader Joe's that I drink every morning. Ooh, that sounds good. Okay, a second. Uh, you have neither of these in Columbus, I don't think, but beach or mountains? Ooh, well, I am not what you would describe as a nature person. Um, so I would say whichever one has the best theaters and restaurants and shopping and museums, um, but definitely not the beach. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite photo on your phone from the last month? And we'll try to share it with the reader or the watchers if we can. Sure. So, um, I am going to share a photo, uh, that I took recently, um, of a piece of artwork. Uh, I was on a recent visit to the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, which is actually in Cincinnati. But the artist is Amina Robinson. She's from Columbus. Uh, She attended the Columbus College of Art and Design, which is where I used to work. Um, She has uh, a lot of famous murals uh, throughout different locations in Columbus, including our downtown Metropolitan Library and also the Museum of Art. Uh, And we at the Supreme Court of Ohio have one of her paintings hanging in our dining room. So that she's a, she's a special artist to me. And and that's, that's a photo that I took recently. Awesome. We're going to have to check out some museums together, I think in our future dot. Okay. What is something you read or saw this week that everyone should check out? So just this morning, I saw a book recommendation for a book called Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, and it's by uh, Daniel Kahneman. Um, and it's about how we think and how we make decisions. And I just thought that was really fascinating. Uh, and I, I read that recommendation in an email blast that I get called Friday Finds. Um, it's a curated list of learning and development uh, resources, and it's compiled by someone named Mike Taylor, um, who really focuses a lot on educational technology, but all kinds of learning and development resources. It's really interesting and free. And best of all, Mike Taylor will be joining us as faculty at the conference, and he'll be doing two sessions. One is on the art and science of uh, learning design, and the other one is on building your design toolkit. Um, so he'll be with us, and I would recommend people to to follow him and his Friday Finds listserv. Okay, well, hey, that's a two for one there. Two recommendations, both sound great. Um, now a little bit more focused on judicial ed. Uh, how many years have you been in judicial education? Seven years. Okay. Um, and what is your favorite part about the NASDA conference? Well, I want to ask you a question. Do you mean about this upcoming conference or the conferences in general? I would say the conferences in general, um, but if you want to throw in your favorite part about this upcoming one, uh, we we don't know as much as you do, so we'd love to know. Well, I would say if you ask a dozen people that question, um, probably most of them would say their favorite part is networking, and I, I value that too. But the geek in me really loves the education, and I love going to the sessions and learning something that I didn't know before, uh, picking up an idea, something that I can try. Uh, That's what gets me most excited about attending conferences. Um, But for this year, uh, I think that I'm most excited about our experiential learning opportunity. Uh, So we have a great morning planned. We're going to go down the street from the conference hotel to the Franklin County Municipal and Common Pleas Courts. And there we're going to have a couple of uh, large group experiential Uh, simulation activities. So one deals with eviction issues and another one with domestic violence. And both of those are designed um, to be empathy building. 
And then after that, we'll have some tours of a couple of the innovative help centers that are located in those courts uh, to learn a little bit more about the, the clients they serve and to really explore how having education in the space where the work happens can be extremely valuable. Um, we'll also have a session that talks about how to design an experiential learning opportunity and specifically how to design one of those large scale simulations. And that will be conducted by two people who've actually done it. So really excited about our ELO this, this conference. Yeah, me too now, now that I know more about it. Um, so uh, we see behind you the theme for the conference uh, and we've seen a lot of it uh, in upcoming to the summer getting ready to register. So tell us a little bit more about the theme. Sure. So the conference committee really wanted to focus on this theme of impact as an org as, as an organizing theme, um, because we want to make sure that the work we do really matters. And we thought that impact was broad enough that it really encompasses all of that work that we do in the profession from creating curriculum and planning learning activities, uh, assessment, evaluation. It really covers everything. We want impact in all of that work that we do. And we thought that impact appeals a little bit to both the logic and emotion, and um, we hope inspires a little innovation. Hey, uh, and I know uh, some other people might not have noticed yet, but the Sunday lineup is a little bit different than it has been in the past. We kind of moved the uh, fundamentals online now that we have all those skills. And so we have something uh, new and exciting for Sunday. So what can you share with us about that? Sure. Well, as you said, you know, the Sunday lineup used to be geared a little bit toward our um, new new members and um, early career professionals. And since that's available online now, uh, we have the space to do something a little bit different. So the Education Committee has put together a really dynamic session to kick off. Um, and uh, they'll be exploring all of the different resources that are available from the association and then tackling a topic that unfortunately has has real broad appeal, which is battling um, burnout. So I think that those will be great ways to, to really jump right in and get started with the conference. And I hope a lot of people will be able to find time in their schedule to, to add that day and uh, to come in on Sunday and, and, and start their education then. And I have to make a plug here that the new professionals will be meeting uh, Saturday night, uh, one of the committees I'm a part of. Um, and so you could come then. And then also we're going to grab coffee before this new Sunday lineup. So uh, lots of opportunities to get that networking in and meet people early uh, if you've never been to a conference before and you'll have friends for the whole week. So um, that's exciting as well. Uh, now a little bit more focused on Columbus itself, uh, where y'all are. What are you most excited to share with the NASA membership uh, in Columbus? Well, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I can't wait to have people come to the Thomas J. Moyer Judicial Center, which is where the Supreme Court of Ohio is located. The building we work in is just, it's so special. Um, and it's it's a meticulously restored Art Deco building. It's full of marble and brass, murals, um, just amazing artwork and um, really impressive views of the city. Um, it's, it's quite a stunning place. And I know every day when I come into work, I have a moment of, even after seven years, I still think to myself, ah, important work is done here. And uh, I'm just really grateful to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, we know you've been heading up the team uh, planning the education for the conference. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, what courses we're going to see and what can, we can get excited for there? Oh, we are so excited. Uh, you know, the education subcommittee was very impressed with the proposals that we received from members. Uh, our members have really interesting sessions planned for you all. Um, so really looking forward to that. And, you know, as a committee, we we did a lot of work around looking at the evaluations from previous conferences to see what members really wanted to see at their conference. Um, we also did some analysis in, in looking at the 12 competencies that NASDA has identified for our profession and, and tried to make sure that we were scheduling sessions that spoke to, to those competencies. 
Um, so we've got four plenary sessions planned. We'll be looking at the impact of judicial branch education. We will have a plenary that talks about meaningful evaluation. Um, we have one on faculty. So the care and feeding of faculty, um, something that we all deal with. And then finally, for our closing session, we'll be looking at how we can all develop and use our own influence to make an even bigger impact. Um, so those plenary sessions, I think, are going to be really inspiring and, and interesting and applicable to everyone. Um, and then on top of that, if as but wait, there's more, Amber. Uh, we also have five rounds of breakout sessions scheduled. So uh, starting on the on the first day, we have some affinity group uh, discussion groups. We have uh, breakouts that are presentations. We have a block that will feature workshops where people will be creating something. Um, we also have a block that focuses all on teaching and learning topics. Um, and then another one that focuses on, we're calling it our project showcase. So we'll, we'll hear from four different projects from um, around the country and some of the great work that our members are doing. So I know it's cliche, but I really do think that there is someone, something for everyone at this conference. So you mentioned affinity groups. Can you tell us more about those? Sure. So, you know, the association has been holding uh, regional meetings via Zoom. Um, so utilizing that technology has been a great thing. So we thought we'd try something a little bit different at this conference. And instead of meeting as regions, um, we would instead meet as infinity groups. So everyone can kind of find those people who are just like them um, and start to have some networking opportunity that way. So we we put that session front and center on our first day so that you can start meeting people right at the beginning of the conference. Um, and we'll have five different groups to choose from. So you can choose to go to the online or e-learning group. Um, there's also one for um, leaders and managers. We'll have one for conference planners and then one specifically for court personnel education and also one for judge education. Um, so like I said, you'll be able to find people like you who are doing the same kind of work that you do, build those connections to um, continue through the conference and then beyond after you leave Columbus. Great. Um, and uh, as some of us, I'm sure, are hoping, uh, we'll have a little bit of extra time in Columbus to explore after the conference. Um, so as a local, what do you think we should check out? Well, the conference hotel is located in the Short North Arts District, and it is just such a robust and fun area uh, that steps outside the door, you will find all kinds of things to do. There are shops and tons and tons of restaurants, everything you could possibly want. Um, lots of art, there are galleries. Um, like I said, all within all within walking distance. Uh, there are also, you know, entertainment kinds of things, lots of roof, rooftop bars. Um, there's a mechanical or pins mechanical is uh, has duck bowling and uh, cornhole and outdoor games, things of that nature. Lots of fun stuff all all right around all within walking distance. There's also a great park if you want a little green space. Good Ale Park um, has a, a, a lot of a lot of great space for you to explore and uh, one of the most picturesque gazebos I've ever seen. So all, all right there, very close to your hotel. Awesome. Um, and uh, as you're our first guest on our new format here, so we thank you so much for being the first, um, I think it went pretty well. All a lot of interesting, exciting stuff. Um, but we're going to close all of these out with uh, an important question that we think everyone um, might get something a little bit out of. So what is the best advice you have ever received? And that can be personal, professional, whatever you feel like sharing. Well, I have something that has served me pretty well in both my personal and professional lives, so I will share that. And um, that advice is just answer the question. Um, so I have a tendency to overthink, to read too much into something, to play out a thousand different possible scenarios of how something could go. Uh, and my brother-in-law wisely told me one time, Dot, 
just answer the question. Assume the best intention. Don't read anything into it. Just address the question that's in front of you. And so now that's what I try to do. Great advice. Uh, anything else you have for us or anything uh, for the membership about the conference? Well, we just couldn't be more excited. It, it, every every day it's getting closer and um, we're really looking forward to having folks here and to show off a little bit some of the things that we do here in Ohio. Um, I I, I know that if if people come, they're going to leave um, inspired and ready to go back and do some great work. Awesome. Well, I, for one, am very excited to explore Columbus for the first time uh, and get to see all these sessions. So I will see you there, Dot. Thanks, Amber.